All right, this is module one, lesson 13, homework help. Okay, so we're dividing, and the main thing is to divide. And uh, the objective is that I will, the children will divide decimals by single digit whole numbers involving easy identifiable multiples using place value understanding and related it to a written method. All right. So what they basically want you to see is that there is a com if you have a 2 here, two groups of something is equal to 1 and 8 tenths. If you look at that carefully, you'll see that there is an 18 and a 2. And hopefully you know 2 times 9 is 18. So this would be two groups of 9 tenths which would look like this okay now so we go over here and we see that we have the two groups and we have the one and eight tenths here as well so one and eight tenths divided by two will give us what's missing here The important thing to remember is that there is a decimal here. The answer is not 9. The answer is 9 tenths. So again, we have a relation to 4 times what equals 32 hundredths. So this is hundredths. So we see, hopefully, 4 and 32. And if we did the multiplications of 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, ding, 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 we will see that 32 is in there. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight. So this is eight hundredths. How does eight hundredths look? Zero decimal zero eight. So over here our answer is zero decimal zero eight. So the relationship between the numbers without the decimal 32 and 4 is 8. Now if you look here, the 32 ends in the hundreds place, so our 8 needs to be in the hundreds place as well. Let's do another problem. Seven groups of 21 thousands. Uh, seven groups of something equals 21 thousands. So seven groups of blank thousands is twenty one thousands so hopefully you see the relationship of twenty one and seven and you know that the answer is three and that looks like this three thousands so our answer here is three thousands how do I know it goes here? Well, because my 21 is here and the last digit is in the thousands place. Okay. So if you know your, your multiplications of the three sevens, I know it's a difficult one for a lot, seven, 14, 21, 28, and so on. You can see that the third one is 21. All right. Now we're breaking it down. When we do this problem here, it's easy. We see the 21. Right inside the problem. We see the 32 right inside the problem. So it's easy for us to do. Over here, we're breaking it down.
into something that is easy to divide by 5. Okay, and most of you can see that there's 45. So this would be 45 tenths divided by 5 will give me 8 tenths, which is 0 decimal 8, 8 tenths. When we get to this problem here, we're going to have to break it up into two parts. It gives us a hint here because it says ones and hundreds. So we're going to take the ones We're going to write that here. Then we're going to take the hundreds, and that's what's left over. And that's right here. Hopefully you see that 6 divided by 6 is an easy answer. It's 1. And then we have 12 divided by 6. Again, easy answer, 2. Now here's where we have to be careful. We know it's 1 and we know that this one over here, be careful where you put the 2, is 0 decimal 2. So we're going to put 1 and 0 decimal 2, two hundredths. Okay? We'll have some more examples of this in a sec. Here we have one that does not have any clues. So we have to look at our numbers here, and especially our divisor. Our divisor is 6, so a good plan is to do our six timetable. Six, skip count, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, and then we have 60. We don't even need the 60. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to decompose this in a way that the numbers appear over here. So if I look at this, the first thing I notice is that it does have a 42. I also see that it does have a 36. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 42, and because it ends on the tenths, I'm going to write tenths. How do I know that? It's because a 2 is in the tenths place. Divided by 6 plus... 36 thousandths. How do I know it's thousandths? Because a 6 in the 36 is in the thousandths place. Divided by 6. Okay. So we know that 36 divided by 6 is 6, so here our answer is 6 thousandths. Okay. I know it's thousands because it's right here. I'm just doing 36 divided by 6 is 6, and then my unit is thousands, so I'm putting thousands at the end. Okay, so now I have 42 divided by 6. Now I'm going to go over here, and I see that it's 7. So it's 7 tenths. Now this step is where you might get confused. So I'm going to add a step in between. So we have 7 tenths 
and we're going to add six thousandths. Oops. All right, if some of you can't see it there, what you can do is on the side, you can line them up. Line up that decimal and then add it together. Okay, so our answer is 706 thousandths. All right, this basically, okay, now I'm, you don't need to do this, but when we get to our algorithm, this is how it's going to look. So this is just an extra step. Excuse me. Going a little too fast for myself. All right. So you can see that there's the same answer here, and if our decimal's here, our decimal's just going to go up here. That's for the future. I'm just kind of showing you ahead of time a little bit. All right, so now we have to find the quotient, then use words, numbers, or pictures to, to describe any relationship you notice between each pair of problems and quotients. So 32 divided by 8, again, you can do the 8 timetables. I already see it right here, is 4. Now over here, the same kind of idea is 32 tenths divided by 8 will give me 4 tenths. So I'm going to write 4 tenths in, form, in standard form, in decimal form. Okay. So how do you explain this? Well, I did do a little bit of an explanation right here. I show this. That's part of it because it could show um, using numbers. So I kind of use numbers to show the 32 and the 8. It's 32 tenths. The only change is the unit. Okay. It says words, numbers, or pictures. So how would you describe it with words? And how would you describe it with pictures? Well, with pictures, you could use the place value chart. And the place value chart we showed in class. So you can look back at some of the pictures from your um, class. I'll be posting it, too. I'm just going to take a quick look to make sure that I have given you enough. I know it's a little different than what you're used to, parents. Uh, that's what we need to do. We need to get them to understand the relationships. All right. And it takes me a time, just sometimes a little bit. Okay. Well, we could say something to the effect of The 32 is 10 times 3 and 2 tenths. So the 4 
needs the four tenths, excuse me, needs is one tenth of the four. That's a hard way to say it. Uh, you hopefully will see 10 times. So this and this dividend is 10 times this one. So our answer has to be 1 tenth the answer for this one. Okay, it's going to go to the right, to the right one time because we're dividing. This was already divided by 10. Okay. So if you write this, I'll be okay with that showing me it as numbers. Another way you can do it is with a place value chart. So this is the ones. Here, I'll do my handy dandy one. So it'd be easier for you to see. All right, I'll go ahead and put that up and duplicate it for the next one as well. All right. So first we start off with eight tens. Then we have one one. And then over here on the second problem we have eight hundredths. And one ten thousandths, excuse me. So everything looks the same except they're in different place values. So when we divide, we're going to do the same thing we do all the other times. All right, so we don't have enough in the tens place. So we are going to go ahead and move them over to the ones place. And they're going to turn into Eighty ones. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, and 16. I'm doing it by five, so. All right, so we have 81 ones. And now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lasso them into groups of 10, or nine, excuse me, because our dividend is nine, okay? So that's why we're doing nines. All right, I'm gonna do it a quick way. I have this one here. I have this one here. Oops, let me do it a, a different way. All right, I'm gonna start off at the bottom. I'm gonna go nine here. I'm going to go nine here. Okay, I'm doing groups of nine. So I wanna do this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ah I'm getting confused ah this is a long one I mean hopefully you can see that 81 time divided by 9 is 9 so the same thing's going to happen on the other one there's going to be a 9 in there but it's going to be 9 thousandths okay but you get the idea hopefully I'm just going to go ahead and do it the way I was going to originally do it I'm just taking nine of each group. I'm 
okay and if I combine this one with all the ones that are left that would be another group so that's nine groups one two three four five six seven eight nine all right so that's nine same thing's going to happen over here. The same thing's going to happen. I would not do this. No way. Too much work. So what I would do is I go back to 81 thousands divided by 9 equals 9 thousands. So we're going to write our 9 thousands. Okay. Again, I will accept this as showing work for how they're related because you're showing that there's the 81, there's the 81, here's a 9, here's a 9, here's a 9, and here's a 9. The only difference is, is our thousands are here, our unit, so it moves over. Okay? All right, what do I have now? Are the quotients below reasonable? Explain answers. So here where they're asking if it's reasonable. We talked about reasonable yesterday when we talked about multiplication. And so what we have to think about is you can go backwards. 7, 8 times 7, does it equal to 5 and 6 tenths? No. That would equal to 56. So it's not reasonable. Okay? So that's one way of saying it. So another thing is 56 tenths divided by 7 would give us 8 tenths. Well, it wouldn't give us, yeah, it would give us 8 tenths. Okay? So this would be 0 decimal 8. All right. Now, I just did the answer for this one. 56 divided by 7 gives us 8. So this is not reasonable. Now, another thing to think about is that when we divide, we're going to, especially with, with uh, fractions, uh, not with fractions, with decimals, All right, when you divide, the quotient should be smaller than the first number. Okay, 8 is not smaller than 5 and 6 tenths. So that's one way of explaining it. Okay. Over here, it is smaller. Our answer is smaller, but there is no decimals. So both numbers, I shouldn't say that because it's not true. If I did 7 divided by 56, it would be smaller. So got to be careful here. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Okay. Well, you can just show that the answer of 56 divided by 7 is 8. You can also show that 7 times 8 equals 56. Or if you want to be, okay.
All right, so now we go to this next one. Now, if you look at this, hopefully you see that the six is in the hundreds place. The eight is in the hundreds place. So this sounds reasonable because we do have something that is smaller in our quotient, which is our answer over here for division. And we have it with the last place value that we have in the first number. Okay. So even if you did something to the effect of 56 hundredths divided by 7 is equal to 8 hundredths, which is 0 decimal 0, 08. So this is reasonable. Okay, we have to write that this is not reasonable. So we know it's not reasonable because it is 56 divided by 7, which is 8. We know that from our math facts. OK? All right, another way to say it, it's 56 ones. Divided by 7 will give us 8 ones. And 8 ones is greater than 8 tenths. Okay? So I'm showing you a couple ways of saying it, just as long as you have some work to show it. I don't want you to just keep copying the same thing. If you did something like this, this would be is a good way to explain it, where you show the numbers 56 tenths divided by 7 equals 8 tenths. Okay, 56 ones divided by 7 equals 8 ones. Okay, right here, I'm doing 56 hundredths divided by 7 equals 8 hundredths. So it is reasonable because I can see it. Okay? All right, so I think that's it. I hope that was helpful. Um, I know I was pausing a lot. I just wanted to make sure I gave you some good information. And again, I'll give you the word, bonus word of the day. Go with Google.